Greetings, fellow mathematicians. In this video, we're gonna take a look at two tests for infinite series, the direct comparison test and the limit comparison test. We'll just take a look at a short overview of each of them and how you apply them. The videos linked below will be all the examples. So let's start with the direct comparison test. And the assumptions are pretty much the same for both the direct comparison and the limit comparison test. We're gonna have two infinite series, one with the term A sub n, another with the term B sub n. Typically, they're gonna go from one to infinity. The starting index could be something else like zero or two. But the important thing here for both the direct comparison and limit comparison test the terms of both infinite series are positive. In other words, there's no negatives for any values of the terms. All right, now with that, there's a lot of different ways this could be stated in different textbooks. This is a very clean, concise version that I like. We're gonna have these two terms where one of them, b sub n, is the bigger. So in other words, the term for this infinite series, b sub n, is bigger than that for this infinite series with the term a sub n. So when we reference the conclusions below, we're gonna call b sub n the bigger term, a sub n the smaller term. All right, now before we even state the current test, the direct comparison test, the conclusions that we're gonna look at and see here, they're the same conclusions you get from the comparison test for improper integrals. So it might be helpful to go back and look at that before understanding this. So what the conclusions are for the direct comparison test, again, referring to this inequality here, where b sub n is the bigger term, a sub n is the smaller term for all values of the index n, your two conclusions are as follows. The first one is if the bigger infinite series with the term b sub n is convergent, then the smaller thing must be convergent as well. And similarly, if the infinite series with the smaller term is divergent, then the bigger term with that infinite series is divergent as well. And those are the only two conclusions you reach. Be careful if the bigger infinite series is divergent, anything can happen for the smaller one. So just be careful. Those are the only two conclusions. Anything else, you would apply another test. Now, the difficult part for students in applying the direct comparison test is how do you know which direction to go with your inequality? Given typically an infinite series where the term might be written as a sub n, should you look for a bigger infinite series? Should you look for a smaller infinite series? That's what we're gonna address over here with some tips. Now, for both the direct comparison and limit comparison test, in my courses, I always like to mention the idea of a large n estimation. In other words, if you take a term like b sub n or a sub n, what does that behave like as the values of n get really big? Now why this is helpful is it's gonna guide you to either looking for something bigger or smaller depending on if the large n estimation term looks like a term for a convergent or divergent series. So first, the first tip, that's gonna guide you to how to go. Look for something bigger or look for something smaller. Now once you determine that, should you look for something bigger or smaller, there's some simple tricks and tips for finding bigger and smaller terms. Most of the expressions for the terms of an infinite series involve fractions so we're gonna reference tricks for the denominator. If we have something here, a sub n, we can make that bigger by making a sub n's denominator smaller. And similarly, a sub n, we can get something smaller by making the denominator of a sub n bigger. So notice kind of the inverse relationship between looking for something bigger and smaller due to what happens with terms getting bigger or smaller in the denominator. Now, just to be clear, these are not the only tips and tricks for looking for something bigger or smaller, but it's gonna be a very useful one for a lot of different infinite series 
that you could encounter for standard calculus two questions. Now, once you do look for something bigger or smaller, and also, so that way you have a reference of infinite series that are convergent or divergent, after you apply a large n estimation, the third tip is a lot of times the infinite series that you're working with, that you're comparing with, either the bigger or smaller, they're either going to typically be a geometric series where the term is r to the n or r to the n minus 1, so a number to an nth power, or the term could be a p series where the term of that infinite series is 1 over n to a number. That number we call p, the power. Now there's clear criteria for the convergence or divergence of the geometric and p series. So just make sure you know them and they kind of are flipped due to the location of r and p. So just make sure I would say you memorize those so that way you can be successful with applying the direct comparison test as quickly as possible. All right, that was again a quick overview of the direct comparison test. Let's go ahead and now take a look at the limit comparison test. Next up, the limit comparison test. Now, the conditions are exactly the same. We have two infinite series, both with strictly positive terms, no negative terms at all. But now, instead of finding a comparison infinite series, something bigger or smaller, with these two infinite series, we evaluate a limit of a sub n divided by b sub n as n goes to infinity. Now, if that limit comes out to be a number, a finite number, c, that is positive, greater than zero, then both series either converge or both series diverge. Now, the tricky part is, for questions, you're just given a single infinite series. Now, for that, I like to introduce the notation or term of calling a sub n the given infinite series. So in a question where you'd be asked to apply the limit comparison test, think that you're given the a sub n infinite series. Well, if you're just given one infinite series, how do you find the other one to implement the limit comparison test? In other words, how do we find the infinite series with b sub n, what I would call in my Calc 2 course, the comparison infinite series? And it's actually really simple for most questions, but not all. We can find the comparison term b sub n by doing a large n estimation on a sub n. And that's why I like to stress the importance of doing a large n estimation. It helps for the direct comparison test and it makes the limit comparison test very straightforward in terms of calculations. So let's take a look at this example here where we have the given term or given infinite series term a sub n as n plus 2 over n plus 1 cubed. Now we think here, due to the indices n, they count up from 1 onwards to infinity through positive integers. What happens to this as n gets really big? Well, if we think of n as being like a million or more, adding 2 in the numerator basically does nothing. So as n gets big, So this only applies for large n. The 2 is insignificant. The numerator behaves like n. And in the denominator, you could multiply that out, n plus 1 cubed. You don't have to, but if you were, you'd get n cubed, n squared terms, n terms, and then just constants or numbers. And as n gets really big, it's the n cubed terms that dominate and are much, much bigger than any other power of n smaller, like n squared or n to the first. The other way to see this is looking at the inside of the parentheses. If n becomes really big, then adding 1 to it is also insignificant. So the denominator 
for large values of n behaves like n cubed. And notice that simplifies nicely. We can cancel one power of n out. And we get 1 over n squared. That simplified expression for the large n estimation, that would work for our comparison infinite series term b sub n. So we might try with the limit comparison test for this infinite series b sub n, that term as 1 over n squared. And why this is helpful? Hopefully you can recognize that as the term of a P series where P is two. Since that value for P is greater than one, that infinite series with the term B sub N is convergent. Now this by itself doesn't give us any conclusion about a sub n, but this at least addresses the first part. How do you find the comparison infinite series? So you're given this term, we find this. Now we just need to go ahead and evaluate this limit of a sub n divided by b sub n. And we're gonna take a look at that in some examples that follow this. Now, the next part of the video, Let's compare and contrast the advantages and disadvantages to both tests, the direct comparison test and the limit comparison test. In this last part, let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of each test. So that way you might have an idea when you would want to apply one test over the other. So the two tests are the direct comparison test and limit comparison test. The main advantage for the direct comparison test is it can be very quick to apply if you can quickly see a bigger or smaller infinite series term to compare with. And that doesn't always go quickly, which is a disadvantage. It can be very tricky or difficult to find a bigger or smaller infinite series to compare with. Now, if it's getting difficult, if you're spending a lot of time looking for something bigger or smaller, or you're just not sure how to start doing that, you might want to jump to the limit comparison test. And the primary advantage I find for my students in Calculus 2 with the limit comparison test is you immediately get to straightforward calculations. So if we think for the limit comparison test, you're going to be given the infinite series with the term a sub n, the first step, do a large n estimation to find b sub n. That works most of the times. And then once you have your comparison term b sub n, then you can jump immediately to calculating the limit of a sub n divided by b sub n as n approaches infinity. So very straightforward, two quick calculations. The disadvantage, you have to evaluate this limit. And that limit can be hard and or tedious. Now we do have access to L'Hopital's rule for evaluating limits with indeterminate forms, but there are plenty of limits in a standard calculus two course for which L'Hopital's rule does not apply. All right, so again, keep in mind, if you're finding it difficult or not obvious how to apply the direct comparison test, you might want to jump to the limit comparison test. Hope you enjoyed this short video. Hopefully you're getting a sense for when you might be able to apply one test over the other. If you're enjoying the content, like and subscribe.